on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keefe and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football, your exclusive look week in and week out at the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team all throughout the 2023 season on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keith, joined now by Brody Pecor, linebacker and running back and athlete extraordinaire for this West Bloomfield Lakers football team. Brody, uh, you've had a much bigger role in 2023 and a different role than you would have probably expected and the team probably would have expected at the end of last season, particularly in the linebacking core. You've been a key player in, in, at that second level for that front seven. How have you adjusted to that role in 2023, knowing that you know coming into the season you're going to play a little bit of linebacker, you're going to play in that defense at the second level, but you know big shoes to fill with Kari Jackson and Montel Johnson out. Yeah, I didn't know I was going to have to play inside backer this year. I thought I was just going to have to play outside, but I had to step up because they both got hurt, so I had to switch to inside backer, and it's been hard, but I'm trying. And having a big impact, a couple of key tackles last game, a knock down a two-point conversion in the end zone uh, that ended up playing a factor later on in the game. Uh, one of the many things that led the Lakers to just be down eight points with seconds to play and a chance to come back in that game that at one point was a blowout against Clarkston last week. And you're playing so well, you're playing like a senior in your junior year, but you've been on this varsity team in, in the past years in a variety of different capacities, quarterback, running back, tight end, you've played on the defensive side of the ball. How does that factor into your preparation week to week and your ability to execute in whatever role that you're playing? Yeah, I just like to give it my all wherever I'm at. If I'm on offense or defense, I just give it 100% no matter what. Brody Peeker with us on this week in Laker football, linebacker for the, for the Lakers and also an athlete for this team that plays in the Wildcat and plays at the running back position as well. And being that you were a quarterback before, quarterbacks kind of have to know every element of the game in, in all three phases. And given that you do play in some capacity in all three phases, how has that past play as a quarterback factored into the way that you approach the game in whatever position you're playing. I think it just makes it easier for me to see the field from different viewpoints and I could just get a better understanding of the game. And, and as one of the leaders of this team, and you got another year after this coming up and, and this year's still while got plenty of time left in the 2023 season. So as you're going forward and you're emerging into this leadership role, how does that also play into the dynamics in the locker room for you and the other juniors on this team that are you know, leaders already this year, but are going to be those top leaders next year and building, helping build this program going forward. Yeah, I think a lot of juniors have stepped up this year, but next year we're going to have to take it to the next level to be successful on the field. Brody Pico with us on This Week in Laker Football. You can watch West Bloomfield Laker Football every week on CivicCenterTV.com. Go to our Laker Sports page at CivicCenterTV.com slash Laker Sports or join us on YouTube for live coverage of every West Bloomfield Lakers football game. Brody, uh, we like to talk to our athletes on, on this team about their interests outside of football as well. So when you're not studying for the big game on Friday night, what are some of the things that uh, you are participating in outside of, of the game? Baseball and fishing. I like to fish. And we talked a little bit about this earlier on in the season, uh, off the air, your, your baseball experience and how that factors into your game on the football field and vice versa. But for those that are, are watching at home or are listening on Lakes FM, they may not understand how those dynamics between these two sports can really be pretty complementary. Give us a, a bit of an explanation on how your football game helps you on a baseball diamond and vice versa. I think vision is a key and having a mentality because when you're pitching, you got to have the mentality. And also, your vision is huge in baseball because you have to have fast reactions and everything. And in football, it like correlates. Bernie Pecor, a dual sport athlete here at West Bloomfield High School, much like we've seen so many times before with these football players having success on the on the gridiron and then going coming back in spring with success on the baseball diamond. Brody, your, your lasting thoughts as we let you go this week and you get ready for Oxford and a, a tough r remainder of the regular season and hopefully a nice playoff run as well. Yeah, um, hopefully we just keep winning and then we just get better each week. 
Getting better each week, going to be critical for the Lakers coming off of two out of three games lost against Lake Orion and, Cl and Clarkston with a win in between against Rochester Adams. Still got a tough schedule ahead. The OAA Red Division play comes to a close this week Friday, 7 o'clock kickoff at Oxford High School. Our coverage begins with this show at 6 o'clock on Friday night and the Laker pregame show at 6.30. We'll take a break on this week in Laker football. On the other side, we'll, we'll bring Coach Hilbers back in. We'll preview that big matchup against the Oxford Wildcats and talk about more of, about this West Bloomfield Lakers football team. This is This Week in Laker Football. We'll return next on Civic Center TV. But look at this again. A kind of a... Kind of just a skipping handoff to Desmond Stevens. Throws the incompletion on the two-point conversion. Nonetheless, that'll keep that where we're at. 19 to 14. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football, your exclusive weekly look into everything about the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team. I'm Tyler Keeft, alongside head coach Zach Hilbers. Big game coming up on Friday night, the final OAA Red Division matchup of the 2023 regular season. West Bloomfield heads back out on the road to take on the Oxford Wildcats. And this is a really interesting team because, again, this year, from a record standpoint, it looks like the Oxford Wildcats are in a bit of a struggle. But at the same time, this is a team that's been highly competitive yeah. against every single team we have seen so far this season. Even, yeah. even that Clarkston team a couple weeks back oh, yeah. really gave them a scare early on. Tell us about this Oxford team and, uh, and preview this matchup we have on Friday night. Well, they're Oxford football, so they're tough and they're resilient. You can always start with that. Um, and you can just see them. They got, they got some young kids. And you could see them as you watch their film between the beginning of the year and now, kind of like Clarkson had a lot of sophomores. They've gotten better and better and better. The running back's running hard. He's a great player on defense as well. They got a lot of kids that'll come up and hit you and tackle you. And they just, you just tell they, they have Oxford kids. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, they're a very tough and aggressive team that can give you a lot of trouble early on, can fluster you early on in the game and throughout the game with the way that they hit and the way that they approach, particularly the running game. And coming off of a game where you kind of did have some struggles defensively against the run, what sort of adjustments do you make or, or from a, a practice standpoint, what do you focus on between a game like that against Clarkston, knowing that Oxford has a very similar kind of strategy offensively? Yeah, you're absolutely right. They definitely do. And I told our kids in our Sunday night meeting that you know a lot of that last week at Clarkson that's on me uh, as a coach because it's my job to make sure that they're ready to play the game on Friday in a lot of ways we didn't look ready so our goal this week especially specifically defensively like you mentioned is to simplify everything simplify our rules simplify our alignments to just to ensure that we're always in the right spot and if we can do that, it's just going to make everything a lot easier. So that was, I guess, the, the goal of our planning for the week. And I guess it's on us now to do it the rest of the week to make sure we're ready to go Friday. And that build up toward the end of the season, you get closer to playoff time. And, and I know that these teams, you're, including yours, you're focused week to week on that matchup that's in front of you. But you can't let that get away that as you get closer to playoff time, that execution's got to be there. You've got to be playing to your game plan to a T every single week. So how do you, you as a coaching, you as the head coach and your staff, work with these young players to get them in the right headspace in these final few weeks to refine their games and, yeah. and, and get those game plans executed as, as close to perfection as possible. Well, yeah, that's part of the goal of simplifying it as well. It's like a little bit less thinking, a little bit more just reacting, going to play. Because we think they're talented kids and they're good enough. But, you know, if you throw so much at a kid, if they're out there like thinking, this is where I'm supposed to be or what am I supposed to do? Even if like they get to the right answer eventually, you don't often have the time to process. So 
uh, the goal is just to get them in the right spot, make their job easy, they can, they can do it at their best level. We're joined by West Bloomfield Lakers head coach Zach Hilbers in his first season at the helm. The Lakers taking on Oxford this Friday on the road at Oxford High School. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. Our pregame coverage begins at 6 o'clock on civiccentertv.com slash Lakers sports. On the defensive side of the ball, a lot of good seen last week. Again, that defensive line has been an absolute terror yeah. for every single team that you faced this year. The edge rushers in Brandon and in Jonathan have been fantastic. And we're also seeing Kamari Pittman in the middle start to have a really big impact all so yeah. uh, as well as as well as that secondary gave some trouble to Clarkston last week as well. Does that give you confidence knowing that there's so much talent and, and that there's so much depth too from what we saw last week at these different levels on the defensive side that you can compete with any team in any sort of a dominance, whether it's in the passing game or the rushing game and whatever strategy they approach taking on your defense. Yeah, D-line's been great all year, and it's definitely the strength of our defense right now as a unit, um, especially with some of the injuries that we've had, and that they've really held us together. Um, and you're right, we've shown flashes in certain areas, but the tough thing about defense, when you play the leagues that we play and, and the teams that we play in our league is what I meant to say, uh, you can be perfect on defense for five out of six plays, but that one play you're not, if it's bad enough and people take advantage, they're going to score. They're going to get these big chunk plays. So it's really about consistency. And I think the flashes are great, shows the potential, but we have to be consistent. Uh, the Lakers taking on Oxford on Friday night. The final showing in the OAA Red Division. Things don't get any easier from there. Southfield, a and Oak Park, and then comes playoff time. Coach, uh, before we let you go, any final thoughts approaching this week's game against Oxford and looking forward to these final three weeks of the season? Oh, we're just excited for the challenge. You know, whenever you lose, you want to get back out there and play the next day, but it doesn't work like that, you know. So it's on us to put that behind us and just have a good week. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. Yeah, you got it. That's been this week in Laker football. Stay with us all throughout the week for more updates. And, of course, you can join us for live coverage of West Bloomfield Laker football every Friday night. This week it's on the road at Oxford High School, 7 o'clock kickoff. Our coverage begins with this show at 6 o'clock and the Laker pregame show at 6.30. For our entire team at Civic Center TV and those in the West Bloomfield High School Athletic Department, I'm Tyler Keith, and we thank you for joining us on this week in Laker football. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too. And on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Final week in the OAA Red Division, but for the two teams on this blue field tonight, a whole lot of football hopefully left to play, putting all eyes on Oxford on this Friday night. Good evening and welcome to another rip-roaring night of West Bloomfield Laker football. I'm Tyler Keith from the home of the Oxford Wildcats, Wildcat Stadium, where upwards of 5,000 fans enjoy Friday night football under the lights all throughout the fall. Tonight, not a consequential matchup for the OAA championship battle, but one with profound impact for the future of both of these teams in the 2023 season. The season is coming to a close soon and every game impacts your shot at playoff contention tonight. Certainly going to have an impact. That's where last, last week's loss at Clarkston leaves the West Bloomfield Lakers, a game that had it all back and forth, blowout leads and a, shock, a shocking comeback. Lots to unpack, so here's a quick recap. OAA rivalry night in Northern Oakland County. The Lakers looking to take control of second place in the OAA Red with one week left in divisional play and Clarkston looking to set themselves up for a championship showdown with Lake Orion this week. 
The Wolves take the coin toss and they will start with the pigskin. Just a few plays in, out goes the football from Brady Collins and it's into the hands of the wrong guy. Jonathan Edison picks it off and West Bloomfield takes over early in the first. On the ensuing drive, the first boom of the night for the bomb squad. Rick Nance finds Elijah Durham for the 40-yard snag. From there, Elboys go three and out and give it back to the Wolves. That's where Clarkston gets it started. Brady Collins takes it himself, finds some green space, and he takes it to the house. If not for Johnny Hustle, Jonathan Gabriel knocks him down just shy of the goal line. Didn't take much after that. On the next play, Griffin Bowman pushes through for six, and Clarkston strikes first with the PAT, making it 7-0. Back to the Lake Show it goes, and Cam Flowers goes for a stroll, takes it to the sideline, and takes it yard. Lakers even it up at seven after the junior's sixth rushing touchdown of the season. But this one was set up to be a prize fight. Folks, Clarkston hits back with two and a half to go in the first. Brady Collins finds Brody Kosin for the snag. Clarkston continues to push forward. And early in the second, it scores number two for the boys in gray and blue. Griffin Bowman gets his second rushing touchdown of the ball game. PAT is mishandled, however, and no good, giving the Lakers an opportunity just down six. On the next drive, the Lakers march up the field and the dynamic duo of Nance and Durham connects for the eighth time on the season to tie up the game. The PAT makes it a 14-13 lead for WB. The touchdown puts the junior Elijah Durham just two touchdowns away from tying Trey Mosley's single season record. Clarkson, however, had their own plans and Boston College bound Desmond Stevens showed his might on a big time dash to the Laker red zone. That set him up a few plays later to take the ball and run it all the way to the side of the field and then become a quarterback, tossing the lob to Indiana bound Brody Kosin to snatch back the lead with a touchdown. They try to make lightning strike twice on the two point conversion. Stevens makes a jump pass and Brody Pecor, however, gets on springs, jumps and knocks the ball down. Clarkston 19, West Bloomfield 14, taking it into the half. Early in the third, Rick Nance takes matters into his own hands with no downfield options, gaining 17 yards on the quarterback keeper. Lakers push deep into Wolves territory, faced with a fourth and goal on just the two yard line. Brody Pecor takes it out of the Wildcat Clarkston shuts it down, taking over deep on their side of the field. On the very next play, Griffin Bowman strikes again, breaking free for 50 yards to send the Wolves into positive territory. That would later set up Brody Kosin's second touchdown of the contest, and a two-point conversion puts the Wolves up two scores, 27 to 14. The Lakers get the ball, but not for long. A high snap over Rick Nance's head gets recovered by Clarkston. The Lakers are able to make a stop, however, limiting the Wolves to just three points. But things are getting ugly early in the fourth. West Bloomfield down 30 to 14 with under 12 minutes of game ahead. And that's not where the bleeding stopped. Rick Nance calls for a gathering of the bomb squad and Colin Cortman diffuses the explosive passing power. Clarkston takes over and a few moments later, Griffin Bowman snags his third rushing touchdown of the night. It's a blowout, Clarkston 37. West Bloomfield 14. Then a new hero emerges for WB after marching up the field, senior Caleb Caudill holds in his first touchdown of the year, making it just a 16 point game at 21 to 37. Desmond Stevens, however, does not accept that fate. He scores on a rushing touchdown and with the help of steady Eddie Langton makes it 41 to 21 Clarkston with under four minutes to play. With that, we see backup quarterback Jamal Shakespeare get some late game action. With three and a half to play, he finds Caleb Caudle way north of the line of scrimmage, puts the Lakers in the red zone. Shortly after, Nigel Dunton takes it in. Lakers 28, Wolves 44 with under 90 seconds to play. And with Shakespeare comes drama. The onside kick muffed by Clarkston, ultimately going to be recovered by the West Bloomfield Lakers. Lakers picking up space, moving up the field, and with Nance back in the fold, finds Paydirt with Cameron Flowers. All of a sudden, we've got a ball game, folks. Lakers 34, Wolves 44. That means you gotta get two, and that's just what the L boys were going to do. Nance picks the handoff, rolls out to his left, getting pressure, escapes. Still on his feet at the 10, looks to the end zone, and it is going. Two-point conversion for West Bloomfield. It all comes down to one final play. Can Justin Ward turn another pigskin into a diamond? 
Brody Cosen says, not today. Lakers, despite the late game heroics, fall in Clarkston 36-44. Oxford's up next to end OAA Red Division play for West Bloomfield. Clarkston sees Lake Orion at home for all the marbles in the OAA Red Division on Friday night. Off the Lakers four and two coming into this matchup tonight on the road again in northern Oakland County against the Oxford Wildcats. The Wildcats coming in two and four overall. Both teams very similar in their OAA schedule. West Bloomfield two and two. Oxford one and three as we hear their fantastic Oxford Wildcats marching band preparing for tonight's ball game. Earlier on, we got some look at some impact players across the board for these Lakers and these Oxford Wildcats. Uh, last week, the Lakers had a massive comeback, nearly turned into uh, a, uh, a comeback from a blowout loss and over, into an overtime sh showdown. So much action on the field was actually an afterthought to mention that quarterback Rick Nance last week secured his place in Laker history, surpassing Bryce Veasley with the most career passing yards in West Bloomfield High School history. Now at 47 career touchdowns, one ahead with three games left to play in the record books. Currently, Rick has 17 passing touchdowns in 2023. That's just seven away from Bryce Veasley's single season record. So plenty more accolades to come for Rick Nance. You also have Cam Flowers, the Anover Huron transfer you're seeing on your screen. With nine touchdowns of the season, three of those are on uh, are in the air and six of those on the ground. Seems like that heir apparent player to Samaj Morgan and Lance Dixon for these West Bloomfield Lakers and part of that very high firepower offense for the L boys this season. But none of that offense really matters if you don't have a rock solid defense. That is definitely something the West Bloomfield Lakers have at their disposal. Some of those key players, including some young guys such as Blake Simmons. He's been someone that the coaching staff has been applauding all season long, an impact player, key tackles, huge assists, being a ball hawk. This is a linebacker high school here at West Bloomfield and the sophomore is starting his career off with quite the bang. No Kari Jackson, no Montel Johnson, but my friends, there is a new problem in town and his jersey number is 16. Take a look out tonight for Blake Simmons as we see the West Bloomfield Lakers taking the field once again, getting ready to enter the stadium, this iconic blue field at Oxford High School. But first, it's the home team. The Oxford Wildcats, their American flag, their big Wildcat blow up behind them, and all their cheerleaders wearing pink during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Here come the Wildcats to enter Sandman from Metallica, very Virginia Tech of them on their blue field at Oxford High School, looking to make a big push toward playoff time. As we hit the crescendo of this song, they get ready, the captains of this team up in front, including Brody Moore and the very important number 42 for this Oxford Wildcats team, and one of the impact players on that team, plenty of big players for this Oxford Wildcats squad, a team with many emerging upperclassmen getting ready to enter their stadium tonight. The Lakers and the Oxford Wildcats playing really for playoff position tonight in the OAA Red Division. Very tough division to win in. That makes it all more important to get a win tonight. Here comes the home team. But the two and four Oxford Wildcats, one and three in the OAA Red Division and always ready to bring a tough matchup for your West Bloomfield Lakers. Led by Zach Line, an alum of Oxford High School himself, a legend in Oxford High, uh, Wildcats lore. Wore the number 42, that iconic number for Oxford High School. Played at SMU and also had a stint in the NFL with the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings. As you see, a very passionate Oxford Wildcats student section cheering on their team, greeting their team tonight, the stadium that can fit up to 5,000 people on a regular day. But here are their challengers, the West Bloomfield Lakers running out on the field. Marquise Morris doing his cartwheels and his gymnastic tricks, flipping all over the field and getting ready for another big night for the West Bloomfield Lakers. This is a team that's responded really well to adversity this season. They lose a game, they come right back, and they fight that much harder. And now, one of the great traditions in all sports, recognition of our country and our heroes with the, with the performance of the Star Spangled Banner from Oxford High School.
Oxford High School Marching Band. And we got another night of football ahead, live from, West, from Oxford High School, near West Bloomfield Lakers, and the Oxford Wildcats in the OAA Red Division Finale Night. Across town, a big matchup in Clarkston also, the OAA Red Championship. Lakers playing a role in that. That loss last week at Clarkston sets up the Wolves and the Lake Orion Dragons. The only two teams to beat the Lakers this season. One of them will be the OAA Red Division Champions for the Lakers and for the Oxford Wildcats. Tonight is all about positioning for playoff time. We've seen teams like the Lakers have two losses and make deep runs in the playoffs, including the team that beat them last week in those Clarkston Wolves. Last season, they had two regular season losses, made it all the way to the Division I semifinals where they lost to Caledonia. That is what the Lakers are looking at, and that's why games like this are important. Any given Friday, you can be defeated. Any any good team can lose to a so-called bad team. And in the OAA Red Division, there are no bad teams. Zach Hilbers said as much about this Oxford High School team. They play quality Oxford High School football. Tough, gritty, grind, grind and pound every single play. They are a physical team, and they are ready to ball every single solitary night at Oxford High School, especially in front of their very faithful fans from a very passionate and football-loving community in Oxford. 48 minutes of football set ahead, 12 minutes put up on the clock. We're about to get underway from Oxford. The Lakers will kick off to begin the game. Oxford will be back to return. Luke Johnson, Jack Hendricks, among those returners for Oxford all season long. Justin Ward kicking off. For the Lakers, powerful leg of Justin Ward will start us off on this Friday night of football. It goes back deep inside the 10 yard line and it's returned. Down to the 25 yard line and that's where that will terminate. That's where Oxford will begin their first drive of the night. And you see that excitement from Justin Ward, a kicker getting in on the action on the return there for Oxford High School. That's where tonight's game will begin on the offensive line off the return from Owen Pavlock. Oxford High School will begin their first drive on their 25-yard line on the left hash. Led by a young quarterback, Jack Hendricks, the sophomore, beat out Eli Carpenter, a junior, and Ben Bruski, a senior, for the starting job. Tonight, he'll begin under center. One man in the backfield, twins out to either side. Hendricks hands it off, toss to Luke Johnson. Rushes up to the 25, gets back to the line of scrimmage and up to around the 30-yard line on first down. Now Luke Johnson is a heck of a player for Oxford. He's been having a big season for the boys in blue and yellow tonight. 6.4 yards per carry, an impact player for these Wildcats. You're going to see his number called a lot on the offensive side, especially in these early game situations where teams are looking to test the fortitude of the game plan their opponents. Second down now and five from the 30 yard line. Snap to Hendricks, looking for a pass, loses contain, quick pass out to the side and deflected as it gets into the hands of the receiver. A great breakup for West Bloomfield brings up third down. A Lakers secondary been stepping up a lot in recent weeks. They got star players out there like Jameer Benjamin and Blaze Rowe, both headed to Division I schools with Rowe headed to Central Michigan. Jameer Benjamin headed to UCLA, but some young guys having a big impact too. Will Espy's been stuffing up big over the last several weeks. And last week, junior Jonathan Edison started off the first drive with an interception. Hopefully some similar luck tonight for the L boys. Third down and five, a whistle will bring us a stoppage. Most of these high schools not having a play clock, so you will occasionally have these stoppages of play. The officials talking things over before we get to third down and five. Next week, we'll come back home for the final home game of the season, Southfield a and coming to town. One of the most anticipated high school football games of the season. It was a big matchup last year, even more important as two of the top ranked teams in the state will be going head to head from the Swamp. Seven o'clock kickoff next week. Our coverage will begin at six o'clock with this week in Laker football on your home for West Bloomfield football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM.
Get even more information on this game and next week's game. Every game all season long, we'll discuss it on the Splash Live, your home for Greater West Bloomfield News, five days a week. Here comes third down and five with 10.29 to go in the first quarter. Hendricks tossed to Johnson, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and gets stuffed. There he is, Blake Simmons, the leader on the tackle, gets in on it with Kamari Pittman and two of the young guys on this team having a huge impact in 2023, taking down one of the OAA Red Division's top rushers on third down. Gets outside the tackles, escapes Jonathan Gabriel, but man, that is a duo that's dangerous, and that sets up fourth down. Lakers gonna take over, out to punt. Drew Cady, his brother Jay is the kicker for this team, and Drew the punter. Both of them also on this OAA Red Division soccer team for, for Oxford. The 10 to go in the first to kick off. The punt lands out of, out of bounds. Lakers will have great field position to start their first drive tonight, and looking to answer last week's tough loss in Clarkston, but continue on with that momentum they had coming out of those last few drives last week. Last week, a big deficit for the Lakers in the last three and a half minutes brought it down to eight points, and if not for a great jump and catch by Brody Cosin on the second of two consecutive onside kicks for the Lakers, you may have seen a comeback and a tie last week. That's not the case. So here we are tonight, 10.03 to go in the first quarter. Lakers and Oxford tied at zero, and West Bloomfield will start on their 47. Snap, quarterback draw, Nance got some space, but there is the whistle. A little bit of action before that ball snapped. Now it's shut down what could have been a big run for the quarterback. Likely going to be a penalty, a false start it is, as the referees will send West Bloomfield back a few yards. That's good news for Oxford as West Bloomfield started really knocking on the door of positive territory early in this game. This is an offense that has had many of those one play drives that get right into the end zone. So knocking the Lakers back a little bit, definitely a benefit for this Wildcats defense. 10 yard penalty sets the Lakers back to the 43 yard line. A first and 20. Nance lined up back, trips to the right for West Bloomfield. Sends Morris in motion. Nance looks out to his right. Gets a pass off to Davis Swain. Right back to the original line of scrimmage. Plus one will set up a second down and nine. Brandon Davis Swain, a guy that's primarily known for his defensive prowess, having a big impact on the offensive side. A couple of touchdowns two weeks ago at home against Rochester Adams and that big win in the OAA Red for the Lakers. And a guy that's heavily celebrated and doing his part at the next level too already recruiting some players from the Detroit area, trying to bring them along with him to Colorado. So, penalty call ends up negating that play entirely. Lakers will go right back where they were and play that second down over again, second and 20 for West Bloomfield. And now Rick Nance got some catching up to do on this first drive of the night. Josh Tate immediately behind him in the backfield you also got Brandon Davis Swain. And now penalty on Oxford sets West Bloomfield back up. Now at their 44 the yard line. Oxford down. decides against taking the penalty and set West Bloomfield up for second down. Nance lined up back, takes the snap and another whistle. Take a look at what that could possibly be. Likely another either procedure or an offside on second down. Early in this game, all tied up at zero, 9.28 to go in the first quarter from Oxford High School as the officials talk things over with both these squads and discuss things themselves. We'll get news on that in just a moment. And while we're waiting, let you know you can get your news from across the community every single morning throughout the week on the Splash Live weekdays beginning at 8.30 a.m. and live all throughout the day. The latest news from West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and Sylvan Lake. Join Di Diane Chabon and I on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM, including news about your West Bloomfield Lakers. Finally, again, second down and long for West Bloomfield. Nance, line back. Takes a snap, hands it off to Jameer Benjamin, breaks some space, gets down to the 50 and in the positive territory. Down to the 49 yard line will set up third down for West Bloomfield. Play set up using Josh Tate as an extra blocker. 
Two backs going right at it in the backfield. And Jameer Benjamin has been having a little bit of action on the offensive side all throughout this year coming into this game for West Bloomfield. Jameer Benjamin in the rushing game. Just a few touches throughout the season. On third down, snap to Nance. Rolls outside, quick pass. It is caught and down to the 38-yard line that will move the chains for West Bloomfield. Laker first down. Nigel Dunton on the catch for WB. Take a look at this, the motion. Nance gets a great pocket again. Steps up and throws that ball out quickly. Just within the territory needed to move the chains and keep this offensive drive going. First down for the Lakers at the 39-yard line of Oxford. Snap to Nance. Rolls up himself and gets back up past the line of scrimmage and down to the 34-yard line. Gain of about five will set up second down and five for Rick Nance, who's been, of course, having a fantastic season throwing the football, a 17-touchdown season so far for the, for the leader in the West Bloomfield number one and just seven touchdowns away from tying the single season record. Already has the career record after last week's performance. Second and five for the Lakers at Oxford's 34. Nance, the snap, a quick pass to Brandon Davis Swain. Caught, extra yards, gets into the red zone and more. Down to the 15-yard line and a big first down for the Punisher. Lakers get in the red zone the first time tonight. And once again, Brandon Davis Swain just getting a little bit of space in the middle at that second level and using the physicality to push up the field. That's why Zach Hilbers has him on this offensive side of the season, an impact player. On the first down, Nance, delayed run for the quarterback. It's back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all he'll get with forward progress. A little bit swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. We'll set up second down for West Bloomfield. Early on this game, 740 and counting to go in the first quarter, all tied up at zero at Oxford High School. West Bloomfield's defense making quick work of the Wildcats on their first drive and now marching up the field after some penalties. Getting deeper into Wildcat territory. That first down run for Nance is a loss of one, sets up second down 11. Snap to Nance, will take it again himself. This time gets a hole, gets an opening, down to the 10 and down to about the six yard line with forward progress. Will set up a third down for West Bloomfield. Just shy of the line to gain. Nance got another Decent snap, a little bit high, but caught it. And just followed that opening hole. Outside, almost had a good block there, but had to get some positive yards. Designed running plays for the quarterback. Zach Hilbers and company wanting to keep this offense simple for the team this week. Nance takes the snap, hands it off. It's Brandon Davis Swain, and he gets inside the five and down to about the two on third down. Now set up a first down for West Bloomfield. First and goal inside the five as the Punisher gets a rushing opportunity for West Bloomfield. So, seen that a little bit, kind of lined up as a fullback for the L boys and they'll hurry it up. First down and goal with six and a half to play in this tie ball game early in the first. Snap to Nance, hands it off to Davis Swain and gets in the end zone. Touchdown, WB. Brandon Davis Swain, Brandon Davis -Swain first to get on the board tonight for West Bloomfield, puts them up six to nothing and gets into the end zone. Not an unfamiliar territory for him, mostly been getting those TDs in the air, but tonight gets one on the ground and now Justin Ward will come out for the PAT to give the Lakers an early lead just under halfway through the first quarter. Nigel Dunton will hold the ball for the junior kicker. High snap. Kick gets up and does get through the uprights. They get the points. Lakers 7, Oxford 0. You're watching and listening to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM.
It's under five minutes on that first offensive drive for your Lakers on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Gives them an early lead, seven for West Bloomfield and zero for Oxford with 6.16 to go in the first quarter. Touchdown rush from Brandon Davis Sway gives the Lakers a seven point lead as Justin Ward will come out to kick the ball off from the middle marker on the 40 yard line to Luke Johnson and Jack Hendricks of the Wildcats. Another deep kick inside the 10, down to about the five yard line. Returned out to the 20 yard line and maybe a little bit extra. About the 21 is where they'll mark it. Now will be where Oxford starts their second drive tonight. Lakers throughout the season, not exactly been content to kick off to a lot of these teams, but against Oxford tonight so far, making their kicks and showing off the prowess of Justin Ward. Of course, the second in the line of Wards to be kickers for West Bloomfield High School is brother Jake Ward, a championship kicker for the Lakers. And now at Central Arkansas, playing for the Bears at the collegiate level. For Oxford now looking to answer back, a team that was able to keep it very close early on a few weeks ago against the Clarkston Wolves in an ultimate loss and last week beating Stony Creek. On first down, Hendricks fakes the handoff, rushes out to the right side, gets an open man, it's caught. Pavlock at the 35, down to the 40, pushes forward to the 45, and a big opening play for the Oxford Wildcats. Puts them knocking on the door, West Bloomfield territory on first down. It's a nice fake, Luke Johnson gets out in the way of Jonathan Gabriel and a really nice delivered ball by Jack Hendricks to Owen Pavlock. And he makes space using those blockers, getting physical. Gets a nice high five and an attaboy coming onto the sideline before this next first down. 7-0 West Bloomfield, under six minutes to go in the first quarter at Oxford High School. Hendricks under center, two men in motion for the Wildcats and that's going to bring up a penalty. Possibly an illegal motion on Oxford. Two guys in motion simultaneously. That's exactly what they're going to call the referees looking it over, talking it over. And no, actually that goes on West Bloomfield and set instead. They jumped on that motion. Saw two guys in motion and went past the line of scrimmage. Going to advance Oxford into West Bloomfield territory on first down at the West Bloomfield 48-yard line in positive territory for the first time tonight. Sophomore Jack Hendricks Behind center, sends two men in motion again with Luke Johnson in the backfield. Hand off to Johnson, out to the left side. Open space, the 45, the 40, out of bounds, just shy of 35. They'll give him the 35 on the reach. And another first down for Oxford. A big run for Luke Johnson. We said earlier, look, this is a guy that gets six yards plus on every carry, and he's got breakaway potential. Two 50-yard plus touchdowns last week on the road at Stony Creek. And He's done it against some of the best teams in the state, also had a similar outcome. Another 50 piece of just a few weeks ago on the road at Lake Orion. This is a dangerous back for Oxford. First down for Oxford at the 34 West Bloomfield. Hendricks takes the snap, a little bit of pressure. Pass down the field and overhead. Incomplete intended for his tight end, Dean Rice, the junior. Good coverage for the Lakers. Sets up a tough path forward for the junior tight end. A couple of Laker defenders in the way of that, including Jonathan Edison, who had a big interception early in the game last week against the Clarkston Wolves to set the Lakers up well. And in this case does it again, setting the Lakers up well on the defensive side of the ball. And it'll be a second down for Oxford. Marching up into Laker territory, some penalties aiding them. So have their rushing game. Second down for Oxford at the Laker 34 yard line. Hendricks under center, takes the snap, hands it off to Johnson, counters inside, pushes forward. What a run from Luke Johnson, gets it down to the 23 and a half yard line. They'll mark it at the 23 and a big rush again for Luke Johnson. This guy's just so physical, he's big, he's athletic. A dual sport athlete and he plays those tough sports, football, wrestling, track, showing off those skills for the Oxford Wildcats on second down. With four and a half plus to play in the first quarter, I'll set up third down at the Laker 27 yard line. Hendricks takes the snap, hands it off to Luke Johnson, up the middle, gets hit hard, still on his feet, pushes forward and gets to the line to gain. 
Likely going to move the chains forward, but some laundry on the field. We'll see what that penalty ultimately is. It's at the former line of scrimmage or just before there possibly could be a holding penalty, but instead it's going to go on the West Bloomfield Lakers and advance these Wildcats even further. A face mask is called. And now that rushing game, that physicality playing a role for Oxford. That matchup against the West Bloomfield Lakers and pushing them further in the West Bloomfield territory. Down 7-0 with 4.20 to go in the first quarter. Oxford coming into this game 2-4 overall with wins against Oak Park in week two, a shutout, 37-0. Their second win last week on the road, 38-28 against Rochester Hills, Stony Creek. Now set up first down and 10 off the penalty at the Laker 26-yard line. Katie lined up a few yards back, one man in the backfield, takes the snap. Looking deep, has to run himself to the 15-yard line, pushes outside, looking for the 10, and ultimately goes out of bounds before contact with Jameer Benjamin, but making a heads-up play. Going through those progressions, nothing down the field, marches up into the pocket before he goes on the run, gives himself a couple extra seconds to set up that play. That's a really smart move for a sophomore quarterback in his first season starting on the varsity side, Jack Hendricks, a fantastic young player, another great young quarterback in this OAA Red Division. We saw another one on display last week for the Lakers and Jamal Shakespeare on his one drive out there. We've seen great young quarterbacks all season long and Hendricks in a long line of fantastic quarterbacks for Oxford High School. Takes the snap, fakes and hands it off ultimately to Owen Pavlock and he is swallowed up back near the 14 yard line. They'll set up a little bit Longer of a drive here late in the first quarter for Oxford High School, but still deep in Laker territory and marching forward, likely to get points on this drive. They got a great kicker too in Jay Cady. Had a 40 yard field goal last week, five for five on PATs on the road at Stony, at Stony Creek. With 3.50 to go in the first quarter and counting. Third down for Oxford High School at the Laker 12 yard line. They gave him forward progress on second down. Hendricks under center, one man in the backfield along with him. Moves the man out in motion. Hendricks takes the snap, getting some pressure, throws to his left side, down the field, and is picked off. Once again, Jonathan Edison. The young man, the junior, his first year on the varsity squad. Not one, but two consecutive games with an interception. And hey, look, he took the Twitter last week. Very excited about picking off the Clarkston Wolves on their field a week ago. Took the X to celebrate. He added University of Michigan football. Added their star defensive back, Will Johnson. Added their legend, Charles Woodson. And now, making another statement early in the first. Oxford marching forward, and now they're going backwards. West Bloomfield takes over at their six yard line. First down and 10 for the L boys. Nance in the gun, takes the snap, hands it off to Flowers from his one yard line, advances forward, tripped up, and gets down to about the 13 yard line, maybe the 14 on first down. That's how quickly the tide can turn when your secondary is on its game. Been tough for Oxford to pass the ball so far tonight. It gives West Bloomfield the opportunity and hopefully making the most of it as we're expecting some weather tonight in Oxford. Rain in the forecast and you see a little bit of haze over those lights at Oxford High School already having an impact early on in the first quarter. 7-0 for West Bloomfield, 2.45 to go in the first quarter. Nance lined up at quarterback at the 12-yard at the line of Oxford. Nance takes the snap, quick pass to the middle. Brandon Davis Swain breaks away at the 20, on his feet to the 30-yard line, the 35, and down around the 40. Brandon Davis Swain again, a big play for the Lakers on second down, advances them near positive territory. Once again, just a quick in route for the big senior. Tight end for West Bloomfield and able to use his athleticism to escape defenders his strength to evade defenders and brings West Bloomfield down to their 38-yard line for a first down. 
Nance takes the snap, hands it off to Flowers, escapes the tackle, rolls out to the line of scrimmage, and more. Back to the 45, still on his feet at the 50, at the 45, at the 40, and finally forced out of bounds right around the 38-yard line. That'll set up another first down for West Bloomfield, and this time in positive territory. Look at this. Just weaving his way to the sideline, gets in the positive territory, and gets a ton of yards on that rushing play. Cam Flowers surpassed 300 yards rushing on the season last week and six of his nine touchdowns on the ground. First down for West Bloomfield at the 44 of Oxford. Draw play, here's the quarterback. Nats to the 45, 35 down to the 30 and over to about the 28 yard line. Nancy ball carrier, fumble on the play, recovery, Oxford. And a big, Big mistake there, ball pops out, and now Oxford in favor of those defensive opportunities, picking up the balls, it's knocked loose from the quarterback. And that's the thing with rushing quarterbacks, you gotta get to the ground, and Rick Nance not afraid to be physical, he showed that last week, but Oxford just as physical defensively, knocked that ball loose, and now they're gonna take over at their 29 yard line. So nothing lost, nothing gained from the interception a few minutes ago. Hendricks from under center, hands it off to Johnson and he is met right away, but he pushes forward and gets just shy of the 35 yard line down to the 34. Brandon Davis Swain chasing him, but unable to take him down. Ultimately, Xavier Davis gets credited for the tackle. That'll set up a second down for Oxford at the 34 yard line of, on their side of the field. All tied up seven nothing in favor of West Bloomfield with one minute and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Next week, we'll come back home for the final home game of the regular season, Southfield a and coming to town, kickoff at seven o'clock. Hendricks under center, two men in motion. He'll take the snap, hand off again. Right back to the line of scrimmage and he is met right away. All eyes on Luke Johnson and he's not gonna go anywhere with a minute and counting to play in the first quarter, right back to right about the line of scrimmage on that particular play. That'll set up a third down now for Oxford. Got to get to about the 40 yard line for first down. I'm talking things over, taking their time, setting up these plays. They want that long sustained drive. This is strategy from Zach Line and his offensive staff. Keep the Laker offense off the field, less explosive potential. Just march up the field and put points on the board. With 40 seconds to go in the first, Hendricks under center. Two men in motion for the Oxford Wildcats. Takes the snap and he'll hand it off again. Nope, he fakes it, rolls out to his left, looks down the field, and it is caught in the positive territory and knocked loose. Lakers say they have it. Jameer Benjamin lays him out. And now it looks like it's gonna ultimately be called incomplete. Not enough forward progress after the catch in order to call it a completion, but nonetheless, a hard hit from the UCLA commit, and he is feeling it. Bringing up a fourth down for Oxford and with 27 seconds to go in the first. Gonna have to give this one up to West Bloomfield off of about a 90 second drive, three and out for the Oxford Wildcats. And these opportunities from the defense making plays so far today for West Bloomfield, an interception led to a West Bloomfield fumble recovered by Oxford. Now Oxford can give this ball up. It is gonna be a timeout, however, from the Oxford Wildcats. So we'll once again remind you next week, a huge game at West Bloomfield High School. Southfield a and is coming to town for an OAA red, OAA white crossover and two of the great powers in this state of Michigan in MHSAA in Division I, Isaiah Marshall, a blue chip quarterback headed to Kansas, will go up against Rick Nance having a blue chip season for the West Bloomfield Lakers and star power all across the board. It's also a, the first rematch for Nigel Dunton against his former team, originally with West Bloomfield, transferred to Southfield a and and then transferred back to West Bloomfield for this season. Big game coming up next week and a ton of playoff points on the line for West Bloomfield and Southfield a and Seven o'clock kickoff next week at West Bloomfield High School on Civic Center TV. Drew Cady back to punt it off for Oxford. 
It'll be a high punt, got lots of hang time. Down about the 46 yard line and bounces out of play just beyond the 40. That's where they'll mark it for the Lakers and they'll start off this drive with 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. That's the news so far. The first quarter, you get your news every single day on Civic Center TV. Courtesy of the Splash Live, Diane Shabon and I, every morning, five days a week, Monday through Friday, the latest news and information from all across the greater West Bloomfield community. Plus, we'll talk with newsmakers in all four communities and across Oakland County about topics that are important to you. Today, we showed a segment from our West Bloomfield Fire Department open house with Zachary Oxich, a flu vaccination clinic coming up Wednesday at West Bloomfield Town Hall at 3.30. All that and more on Splash Live on Civic Center TV. Low snap to Nats, quick pass outside to Marquise Morris, caught to the 40, to 45, up to the 50, still on his feet, gets down about the 44 yard line. Big save on first down for West Bloomfield, a botched snap to Rick Nance. He picks that ball up, and he knows immediately, I got that check down, Marquise Morris, right to my right side, and then Marquise makes a ton of extra yards after the catch and pushes into Oxford territory. This first down will begin at the 44 yard line. They'll roll the clock after the first down. And ultimately that's gonna spell the end of the first quarter. West Bloomfield seven, Oxford zero. More football coming up on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM on cable and the radio. Back to Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll start the second quarter. Rick Nance takes the snap. Quick pass to the left side of Marquise Morris, down to the 35, still on his feet at the 30, breaks free, 25, 20, and out of bounds. Deep in Oxford territory, and Marquise Morris once again a big play in the receiving game. Gets the check down and marches up the field for West Bloomfield. Now deep in Oxford territory early in the second quarter. Already one touchdown in the air. Uh, one touchdown for West Bloomfield is on the ground from Brandon Davis Swain. The Lakers looking to take a two score lead early in Oxford. 11.50 and counting after the whistle. Marks this play active to start the second quarter. Nats looking down the field, check down again, just outside the reach of Morris will bring up second down. That's a very quick progression for West Bloomfield. Had a couple of guys on a go route down the field. The two split out to the right side. We'll show you that replay here in just a moment. Two split out to the right side for Nance. One of the, both of them going deep, one inside and one on a go route. He looks immediately to the check down, just rushes that ever so slightly and it's ahead of Marquise Morris. Now set, that, set second down for West Bloomfield at Oxford's 19. Nance, empty backfield, takes the snap, hands it off, up to the 15. Down, pushing forward, Cam Flowers to about the 14 and a half yard line. Will set up third down for West Bloomfield. Cam Flowers, big impact player for the Lakers. Both in the passing game and the running game, over 300 yards rushing coming into this game for West Bloomfield. And decent on the receiving side too, with three touchdowns, 161 yards in the air for number six this season also, and plenty of football left for him in West Blueville, just a junior. Gonna be one of those big players next year in his senior season. On third down, the senior Rick Nance in the shotgun, takes the snap, runs with it himself, down to the 10, down to the five, and into the end zone. Touchdown, WB. All game long, Rick Nance been taking the football himself been pushing forward and now finally gets pay dirt. But unfortunately that's coming back. Holding call on the offensive line will set the Lakers back and take six points off the board. But Nance making quick work on that play, getting athletic, pushing forward. Unfortunately, not gonna matter. West Bloomfield gonna march back. 
And they'll continue this drive now with a third and long from Oxford's 24-yard line. And they're going to have to get deep into Oxford territory for a first down and to get back into the field goal range of Justin Ward. Nance takes the snap, looking down the field. Caught and bobbled and out of the hands. It looks like Caleb Caudle was the intended receiver. That is the case. That'll set up a fourth down. Rain playing the factor already in this game. We'll take a look at that again. Nance got a good pocket, got a good look, got a good throw in the air. Great catch on the leaping grab from Caleb Caudle. And on the contact, just slips out of his hands. We've seen the weather already playing a factor tonight. An interception for Oxford, a fumble by Rick Nance, a fumble by Oxford, and now fourth down for West Bloomfield. The snap, the kick is up, and the kick is through for Justin Ward. A big field goal for West Bloomfield. Puts them up 10 to zero over Oxford. Back with more on Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on CivicCenterTV.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at CivicCenterTV.com and click Schedule at the top of the screen. Welcome back, Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We're also on the Facebook page of the West Bloomfield School District at West Bloomfield Schools, on our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15, and on our YouTube as well at Civic Center TV. Subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll always get notified of when we're going live with West Bloomfield Laker football. 10 0 with just under 11 minutes to go in the, fir in the first half from Oxford. Ward kicks it off to the Wildcats, a leaping grab at the 15 and recovered. Pavlock down to the 20, past the 25 to the 30 and pushes forward past the 35 yard line and up to his 36 yard line. And a great setup for field position, the best early field position off a kickoff so far tonight for the Oxford Wildcats and looking to get on the board and even this game out a little bit. Look, they've had some good offensive drives so far, but Couple of early mistakes, an interception and a fumble. Haven't helped them early against this West Bloomfield Lakers team. On first down, Hendricks under center, takes the snap, hands it off. Johnson pushes up the middle, back to the line of scrimmage, gets one yard and then gets swallowed in the backfield. Not gonna get much of anything on first down. We'll set up a second down and nine for the Oxford Wildcats. And there's actually Preston Wilder on the rush for West for the Oxford Wildcats. The freshman getting an early run for Oxford was the MVP of the Oxford Gold seventh grade team back in 2021. Winning is in his pedigree. That team went undefeated 6-0 back in 2021, hoping to do more of the same in his high school career on the varsity squad. Second down for Oxford, snapped from Hendricks. Hand off again to Wilder, pushes up near the 40 yard line, about the 39 yard line, and will bring up third down. Preston Wilder on the carry. This Oxford team keen to use its young guys in key position. Preston Wilder, backup running back, the number two guy. Tough shoes to fill with Luke Johnson, their primary back, but getting his touches and making an impact. And so is Brandon Davis Swain on that defensive line for West Bloomfield, swallowing up the freshman. The freshman trying to make plays, and the senior used to making them for West Bloomfield. Sets up third down. Got to get to the 45-yard line, third and five for the Wildcats. One split out to either side. One in the backfield. Hendricks, snap, handoff to Johnson. Pushes forward. Going to get about two yards. Now set up a fourth down and short for Oxford with 9-10 and counting to go in the first quarter and the Lakers up 10 to zero. So now it's that inflection point for Oxford. Do you go for it? Marching forward in West Bloomfield territory down 10 early 
Or do you bring Drew Katie back out there and rely on your defense to stop this multifaceted and highly talented West Bloomfield Lakers offense? Jack Hendricks runs back out on the field and into the huddle for the Oxford Wildcats as your Lakers take a quick rest and take a knee with 8.40 to go. Oxford going to go for it on fourth down. Just two yards to go. A whistle and a timeout for Oxford as they run out of time nearly. They want to avoid a delay of game. So we'll let you know about next week's game. In the meantime, Southfield A&T coming to town to go up against the West Bloomfield Lakers. Hopefully better weather conditions next week at West Bloomfield for the biggest matchup on the board in the MHSAA. Southfield a and loaded with talent, a championship contender, West Bloomfield, much of the same. And now their final home game of the regular season. Southfield a and 7 o'clock at the Swamp and live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Lots to talk about. Before that matchup, we'll have Zach Hilbers and company joining us, as always, on this week in Laker football. Join us early on next week for that. Thank you for supporting Referees whistle us out of timeout. Both teams will retake the field on a fourth and two for Oxford. At their 43 yard line, they gotta get to the 45 for a first down. Jack Hendricks, a sophomore quarterback in that dark blue jersey with yellow numbers and the number three for Oxford leading the charge, Luke Johnson. 6.4 yards per carry coming into this game. Can he get two on fourth down? Three men in the backfield. Shotgun snap to Hendricks and it's whistled down. A penalty will stop this play. Now Oxford will call another timeout. Want to talk that over again. Saw something late on this Lakers defensive front and wanted to make sure they were set up for success on fourth down. That's their second timeout of the first half with eight and a half to go and some change in the first half. 10-0 West Bloomfield. And plenty of news from throughout the community all week long. Fire Department open house making a lot of news and stories from within the West Bloomfield School District. All of that and more on the Splash Live. You can join us weekdays beginning at 8.30 a.m. and running all throughout the day for replays on Civic Center TV and on 89.3 Lakes FM. We're also on our Facebook at Civic Center TV 15, on our YouTube at Civic Center TV, and on plenty of other Facebook and other social media outlets all across the communities. And Splash Live, your stories from your hometown on your community media, five days a week and always online on CivicCenterTV.com. Lakers up 10-0 early in this game, eight and a half to go in the second quarter, and a fourth down for Oxford. Hendricks under center, snap, handoff, Johnson takes it, and he gets stopped. Gonna be shy, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and a turnover on downs. That Laker defensive front coming up big again as Johnson rushes outside the tackles. And again, the Lakers will take over on a turnover from Oxford for the first time tonight. That is a turnover on downs, and now West Bloomfield will have great territory as they rush toward the end of the first half set up on the 43-yard line of Oxford. Already got a touchdown and a field goal on the board, 10-0. And Rick Nance setting up his team for another hopefully successful drive for the L boys. First and 10 for the Lakers on Oxford's 43-yard line. Snap to Nance, hands it off to Josh Tate, and he's immediately met in the backfield by a couple of Oxford Wildcats. Now set up a second down. A little bit over 10 yards, didn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll set the Lakers back to the 46 yard line, second down and 13. Nance lining up, discussing it with Caleb Caudill as he splits out to the, to the right side. Alongside Elijah Durham. Tate in the backfield with Rick Nance on second down. Snap to Nance, looking, looking, up the field, caught to Nigel Dunton at the 35 yard line, pushes forward to the 30, first down and more for West Bloomfield. A setback, but they swipe that out of their memory and move forward, marching up the field, and there'll be another first down for West Bloomfield. Marching all the way down to the 27 yard line, Nigel Dunton now getting involved for WB, and a successful night so far for this Lakers offense 
in the passing game, Rick Nance been making really good decisions and, the, and these wide receivers are pulling in these footballs. Tough to do on a night where it's rainy and it's getting cold in Northern Oakland County. First down and 10 for the Lakers at the 31, 32 yard line of Oxford. Nance in the gun. Benjamin in motion, takes the snap, takes the handoff, rolls outside, the 20, down the 15, still on his feet, fighting to the 10, and Jameer Benjamin will get there, down to the 10-yard line for West Benjamin Bloomfield, will set up a first down and goal for WB. Jameer Benjamin, a four-star recruit in the ESPN for the 300, took one trip to LA, made an impression on Chip Kelly and company, and making an impression there, reaching forward, the forward progress will advance West Bloomfield down to the nine yard line. The first and goal. Nance takes the snap, fakes the handoff, takes it himself, up the gut, inside the five and down to the four. Another great run on the quarterback draw for Rick Nance. Sets the Lakers up deep inside the red zone where they've been very successful all season long. 81% of the time coming into tonight. If West Bloomfield's got into the red zone, they've scored and 68% of the time, it's been a touchdown. Second and goal for West Bloomfield, two in the backfield for the Lakers, Khalid Muhammad and Brandon Davis Swain. The Punisher gets the football, pushing forward down to about the two yard line. We'll set up third down and goal for West Bloomfield. Brandon Davis Swain, Ben, kind of the key target for West Bloomfield in the rushing game tonight, that big, Physical senior for WB, six foot four, 235 pounds, and a big problem for anybody that goes up against them. Defense, offense, special teams. Nance takes a shotgun snap, draw play up the middle, and finally gets his points. Touchdown, WB. West Bloomfield going up 16 with about six to go in the first half. Rick Nance getting it. His first rushing touchdown of the season. Gets a good block, follows Brandon Davis Swain right up the A-gap. What a strategy for the Laker quarterback. Lakers up 16 to nothing as Justin Ward comes out for the PAT. Already one for one on a PAT tonight and one for one on field goals. Looking for another opportunity to put points on the board. Good snap, good hold, good kick, and the points go to West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield 17, Oxford zero. Taking care of business tonight. They'll need to do more of the same next week as they come home to play Southfield a and Seven o'clock kickoff, big matchup. Two Oakland County powers fighting for playoff position. And next week, gonna have big implications. Seven o'clock kickoff, our coverage begins about six on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The PAT gonna be reattempted for West Bloomville off of a penalty on WB, so we'll have to redo it. That point will come off the board, at least temporarily, for Justin Ward and company, and they'll try again this time. The kick gonna be from about the 15-yard line, so a 25-yard PAT for West Bloomfield. Snap, hold, kick. Up and through the uprights, the points go to West Bloomfield. WB 17, Oxford 0. You're watching and listening to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Siobhan as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The Lakers taking care of business in all three phases so far, up 17 to nothing against the Oxford Wildcats on their blue turf on their home field at Wildcats Stadium on this rainy Friday night. 6-0-1 to go in the second quarter. Ward kicks it off, deep kick down about the 10 yard line, covered at the 14 by Oxford, up to the 15 to the 20 yard line, down to the 30. After a little bit of pushback, they'll give a forward progress about the 29-yard line 
Again, Owen Pavlock on the kick return for Oxford, and that's where their offense will take over once again, making some progress so far on this Lakers defense. A tough task, Luke Johnson leading the charge in the rushing game, and Jack Hendricks making some good throws so far, despite the one interception early on from Jonathan Edison. That's a big thing here for Zach Line, the head coach, you see on the left side of your screen. A legend of sorts at Oxford High School. Had a great career also at SMU and in the NFL. First down snap, Hendricks escapes the Punisher, gets up to the 35 to the 40, still on his feet, down to just shy of the 45 yard line. And what a shifty play for the sophomore quarterback. Take a look at this. Getting chased by the Punisher, and he runs him out of his shoes. Not often you're gonna do that for anybody, including a sophomore quarterback, but the short stop on the baseball field makes a big stop for, from the, this defense for the Lakers and a first down for the Wildcats. Hendricks takes the snap, hands it off. Johnson to the 45-yard line. That's where he'll be stopped and pushed out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 46. A short gain on first down will set up second for the Oxford Wildcats, down 17 with under five and a half to play in the first half. You can always watch Laker football online. Keep up to date with your favorite high school football team on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports. Scoring updates in your home for this week in Laker football and our live coverage every week. Second down for Oxford. Hendricks takes the snap. Play action, pass out to the right side, caught in the middle of the field. Breaks free, open down to the 25, to the 30, 45, and down to the 30 yard line ultimately. Dean Rice pulls it in the tight end in the middle of the field and gets some yards after catch, pushing now into positive territory for Oxford. Great throw by Hendricks, a great play by Dean Rice to push forward with three, four Laker defenders looking to take him down with just over five minutes to go in the first half. Oxford now at the West Bloomfield 29 yard line on first down. Hendricks under center, one man in the backfield, snap. Hand off to Luke Johnson outside, gets to the 25, pushes forward about the 23. And a cornucopia of Lakers Luke ultimately Johnson stopping that forward team. progress, but gets a few Second yards down. on first down. Luke Johnson, a huge impact player a tough guy to take down. He's a county champion wrestler last season for the Oxford Wildcats. One of those many reasons you're gonna see Zach Line and this offense go to number 31 all night long. Second down for Oxford at the Laker 24 yard line. Hendricks under center, the sophomore quarterback and a whistle and a flag. Oxford fans are cheering, and that's because it's again an offside on the Lakers' defensive front. That'll move Oxford forward even deeper in the Laker territory and put them into the red zone with 4.06 to go in the first half. West Bloomfield kicked off to start the game, so they will get the ball to begin the second half, making this drive all that more important to Oxford. Gotta get points on the board to keep themselves in this game early on this rainy night in Northern Oakland County. First down for Oxford at West Bloomfield's 19. Hendricks under center, bunch to the right, and Pavlock in motion right to left. Hendricks rolls out to his right side. Quick pass outside is caught. Shifty move inside for Johnson, down to the 10, pushing forward. And he's gonna lose that forward progress at about the nine yard line, but once again, this sophomore quarterback could not be more impressive so far tonight out of the play action. Tosses it off to Luke Johnson. Sorry, out of the rollout. Passes it off to Luke Johnson and lets his playmaker make a play. First down and goal at the nine yard line. And for the first time tonight, Oxford getting dangerously close to pay dirt against this Lakers defense. Three and a half to play in the half. 17 nothing West Bloomfield. And a whistle now, West Bloomfield pointing to the offensive line, possibly a false start. Looks like that's exactly what is going to happen. That'll set Oxford back, so they push all the way forward inside the Laker 10 for the first time tonight. And that penalty will set them back now to the Lakers 13 yard line with 334 to go in the first half. Oxford's been able to move that football forward, hasn't hit pay dirt, 
hasn't been in a position yet to set up for their senior kicker, Jay Cady, either to get on the board. Hendricks again under center for Oxford. In motion is Eli Carpenter, snap. Hand off to Johnson, shifts up the middle, down inside the 10 again to about the eight yard line, where he's ultimately gonna be swallowed up by Brandon Davis Swain, Blake Simmons and company. And that'll set up an another play for Oxford deep in the Lakers territory. 318 to go in this first half. It's been all Lakers on the scoreboard so far. 17 to nothing, two rushing touchdowns, one for Brandon Davis Swain and one for Rick Nance, plus a field goal from Justin Ward. Oxford looking to get their chance deep in Laker territory. Hendricks under center. One man in the backfield, snap, fakes the handoff, looks out to the right side, caught, and ultimately taken down a big stop for Jaden Allos. That ball tossed out to the right side to Drew Cady. And ultimately, the Lakers making a big stop, setting up a fourth down now for Oxford. And maybe a chance for Drew Cady's brother, Jay, to put some points on the board, but it looks like Oxford's gonna keep that offense out on the field. A sustained drive for these Wildcats. Good news for them, keeping this Lakers offense that's been able to make some easy work so far of Oxford's defense off the field as we approach halftime. At the Laker 12 yard line, Hendricks lined up in the backfield, takes the snap with Johnson next to him, looking, rolls out right, on his feet at the 10, fakes the throw inside the five and into the end zone, touchdown Oxford. They do, no, they're gonna call him down just shy. He reached for it, but they're not gonna give it to him. Here he goes, rolls out to the right side, gets outside the tackles, escapes Brody Pecor down to the two, Knee doesn't touch the ground, doesn't look like. Maybe that ball just didn't cross the plane and that's ultimately gonna set up Oxford on their one yard line. No instant replay for the referees, there is for the broadcast. Looks like that could have been in the end zone for the sophomore quarterback. But nonetheless, they'll get one more shot at this at the Laker one yard line. The closest Oxford's been all night to points. Here's their answer. Hendricks in the pistol, takes the snap, rolls out to his right side, quick pass caught on the ground and in. This time, it is a touchdown for Oxford. The junior, tight end Dean Rice gets in the end zone and Oxford gets on the board. Take a look at this. Hendricks rolls out to his right side, immediately finds his tight end, gets that football to him before those defensive backs can look back. Just a perfectly executed design play for Zach Line and his offense. Makes this game an 11 point matchup. And now Jay Cady will come out for the PAT. Five for five last week on the road at Stony Creek. Getting his first opportunity tonight. Brody Moore will hold the ball for the kicker. Snap, hold, kick, and the points for Oxford. 17 West Bloomfield and seven for Oxford with 145 to go in the first half. The Lakers will get one more shot at the end zone before they get the ball ultimately to start the second half. Next week, coming to town, Southfield a &T, the Warriors versus the Lakers at the Swamp for an OAA red and OAA white division crossover. Two of the state's biggest power players will match up in the final regular season home game for West Bloomfield before they'll head on the road once again to Oak Park in the final week of the season. Seven o'clock at West Bloomfield High School. That's the kickoff. Our pregame coverage begins at six o'clock. Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM, your exclusive home for West Bloomfield Laker football all season long. After the touchdown, Oxford gonna kick the ball off. Jameer Benjamin, Cam Flowers and company back deep for West Bloomfield. And Jay Cady will kick this ball off from the 40 yard line. with 1.45 to go in the first half. The first post touchdown kickoff for Jay Cady rolls ultimately into the end zone and Lakers will take the touchback. No time off the clock 
They'll have a minute 45 and all three touchdowns to the answer back on Oxford, who took this after that previous drive, several minutes long from a 17-point game to a 10-point game. This West Bloomfield offense being able to really make quick work of Oxford, both on the ground and in the air so far tonight, looking to do much of the same. With a minute 45 to go, they got the luxury of all three of their timeouts before we'll reach halftime. Nance, empty backfield, trips right, twins left for the senior quarterback. Takes the snap, throws out right, high catch, but is caught at the 30-yard line, advancing forward. Marquise Morris gonna set the Lakers up well with a buck 38 to go in the first half. Another design passing play, one step, looks to the right, finds an open man, a little bit of a screen there by Brandon Davis Swain and Jaden Allos. Gives some space on that high throw for Marquise Morris. Nance takes a snap, good pocket, looking, rolls forward, gets met by a defender, escapes, throws it deep down the field and caught at the 40 yard line, on his feet, down to the 30 yard line. And what a recovery for Rick Nance and his senior tight end, Brandon Davis Swain. Turned absolutely nothing, a disaster, an incoming sack on the quarterback into a huge chunk play and marching down into Oxford territory with just over a minute to play in the first half. Wow, what a play by Rick Nance and Brandon Davis Swain, the seniors, setting up first down and 10 in the red zone at the 21 yard line of Oxford. Empty backfield, trips right, the trips left for Nance. Throws to the outside to Nigel Dunton, but it takes a little skip on the blue field. Incomplete on first down. We'll set up a second and 10 for West Bloomfield. Looking to answer back would be a huge lead for them, potentially a 17 point lead if they get into the end zone. Leading into halftime where they would then take over and have the football offensively to start the second half and a chance to start running away with this game in Oxford. Second and 10 for West Bloomfield at the Wildcat 21. Nance with Morrison's shot in motion. High snap, loses the football, rolls out to his right, lost it again. But West Bloomfield will recover it. The ball is slick, and as Nance picks it up and runs out to look for a pass Nance down the field, it slips out of his hands for the second time tonight, but this time, they can exhale a little bit, They'll lose a ton of yards. The ball now gonna be placed at the 37 yard line with 30 seconds to go in the first half. And a third down and very long for West Bloomfield off the fumble. Nats having a discussion with Cable Cottle to his left and Marquise Morris to his right. And ultimately Zach Hilbers is going to call a timeout with 18 seconds to play. You should take a look at your screen, civiccentertv.com. You're seeing those lens flares from the water droplets in the air. A very wet night at Oxford High School, rain rolling in. And that's definitely playing a factor. Interceptions early for both for Oxford, fumbles for both Oxford and West Bloomfield. And another fumble for West Bloomfield there on second down, sets up third down and extremely long with 18 seconds to go in the first half. And that's gonna be a factor all night long. All the more reason the Lakers wanna make quick work with, with 18 seconds left in the half to put some points on the board, but at the very least will take solace in the fact that they will get the football to start half number two. Third down and long for West Bloomfield with 18 seconds to play in the first quarter. Again, an empty backfield for Rick Nance. Trips to the left, including Brandon Davis Swain. Nance, screen pass, Dunton catches it to the 40 yard line, to the 40, 35 to the 30, still inside, looking to pitch it, he does, gets it to Jaden Allos down to the 20 yard line and out of bounds with his seconds left on the clock. A heads up play, both by Nigel Dunton to pitch that ball off, knowing that seconds are ticking off the clock and Jaden Allos to run to the sideline and get out of bounds with whatever he can make of that. Lakers still have two timeouts, but just four seconds left on the clock. They will take one of those timeouts as they won't mark that ball out of bounds. The Splash Live is your home for Greater West Bloomfield news every single day of your work week, Monday through Friday. Live show at 8.30 a.m. on Civic Center TV. 
on 89.3 Lakes FM, online on CivicCenterTV.com, and all across the internet as well on social media. Our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15, our YouTube page at Civic Center TV. The latest news and information across your hometown, plus long form discussions with experts in projects, events, and interesting stories all across our community every single day. Greater West Bloomfield's live daily news and talk show, The Splash Live every single day exclusively on Civic Center TV. West Bloomfield back at the 21-yard line of Oxford with six seconds to go in the first half and that'll set up a Justin Ward field goal. One for one tonight. And it's way over his head. Recovered by West Bloomfield but that's gonna knock them down and Oxford will get one last chance at the 46-yard line with just a few seconds I'm remaining in half number First one. Take a look at this. High snap way over the head of Dunton. A mouse in the house. They got to chase that ball. A slick football, but to get on top of it, Dunton saves the day from a wide open field. Now two seconds left on the clock. That'll give Oxford an opportunity to maybe put some points on the board before West Bloomfield will get the ball to start half number two. Not enough for more than one play. Jack Hendricks coming out, the sophomore quarterback, an impressive first half in his own right. Putting seven points up on the board the last time Oxford had an offensive drive. A touchdown at the one yard line to Dean Rice. One man in the backfield trips to the left for the sophomore quarterback, Hendricks. He'll take the snap, looking, looking, getting rushed, throws it outside to his running back to the 50, down to the 45 to the 40, still on his feet to the 35-yard line. He'll go down, and that's where we'll end the first half. West Bloomfield 17, Oxford 7, the Laker Halftime Show coming up on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. You're watching and listening to your home for Greater West Bloomfield News, Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, 89.3 Lakes FM. Be an advocate for environmental health, a protector of your family. It's hazardous. It does not go down the sink. And the things around you. Because our health is connected to our environment, let's work together and make healthier choices for a healthier future. Get started at michigan.gov slash envirohealth. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Today I'm going to tell you about sportsmanship, because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard.
Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back. Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Big game with OAA rad implications. Not Let's quite in it. sight despite them because of these two teams' records, but playoff implications. A ton of points up for grabs for both of these teams tonight. So far, West Bloomfield taking the advantage 17-7 to into the break, and they'll get the football to start the second half. Impact plays all across the board for both teams in the first half, beginning with West Bloomfield. Rick Nance handing the ball off to the Punisher for the first time this season on the ground. Got into the end zone. First, he advanced the Lakers deep into Oxford territory, setting up a, a first and goal, and ultimately got into the end zone on the ground the very next play. The Punisher been a big time running back for the Lakers tonight, really in more of a fullback position. That power back for West Bloomfield, tough, physical, and really, really rough trying to take him down in the backfield. Got the Lakers on the board early. Next one for the Lakers, Rick Nance had an opportunity. Took a quarterback draw and rushed right up the middle. Got tons of space, made a shifty move, move escaped Luke Johnson and company and got into the end zone. Unfortunately, a holding call set the quarterback back and the Lakers had to take another couple of tries. That ended up in a field goal for West Bloomfield that ultimately put them up 10 to nothing. Justin Ward splitting the uprights, giving the Lakers a two score lead. But that's been evident of Rick Nance's play so far tonight. Highly effective in the running game, even more effective in the passing game. And as we see the Oxford High School marching band performing in the elements, got their raincoats on, and that's because it's a pretty rainy night in Oxford. Not necessarily, uh, not necessarily what you would consider to be rain showers, but consistent rain since the jump tonight. And that's played a factor, some interceptions, a few fumbles, including a couple for the Lakers and a botched snap on a field goal attempt near the end of the half for West Bloomfield. But ultimately, Lakers able to get into the end zone a couple of times tonight. First, it was, it was from Rick Nance, and then near the end of the half, Nance was able to get in the end zone again with about 6.05 to go in the first half. Got a good block from Brandon Davis Swain, shifted right up the gut and ultimately got in the end zone. Rick Nance getting on the board in the rushing game. And so far this season for Rick Nance coming into this game, had 93 yards on the season. So not only does he pass the century mark on the ground tonight, but he hits pay dirt for the first time in the rushing game in the 2023 season for West Bloomfield. And Rick Nance is a dual threat quarterback, but we've mostly seen him be a threat for West Bloomfield this season in the air, came into this game with a 17 touchdown performance on the season and came into this game with the school record for career touchdowns at 47. Last season on the ground, Nance, not a big impact player for West Bloomfield necessarily toward the end of the season, but overall was huge for them. Their second leading rusher behind Kenneth Jones the third in 2022. 53 carries for 386 yards and three touchdowns, averaging over seven yards a carry and showing off what he can do with great blocking and a good eye up the field as well. Rick Nance getting on the board. Lakers 17, Oxford 7 for the Wildcats tonight. Their sophomore quarterback, Jack Hendricks, has been super impressive. Got a great eye for a first-year varsity starter. You can clearly see why Zach Line decided to go with the sophomore quarterback, build that quarterback up for the future. Got this year and two more years of football at Oxford High School before he will graduate. And you definitely can see some signs of a star quarterback for Oxford going forward. Some big shoes for him to, to fill coming into this season for the Oxford Wildcats. A couple of very good quarterbacks in line before him. Dominic Cassisi, who gave the Lakers some trouble last season and the season before that. Brady Carpenter was a huge impact player on this very field for Oxford and really ripped apart the Lakers defense on that particular night and been some big heads up plays for the sophomore quarterback. Very impressed 
so far with his play on this rainy night at Oxford High School, keeping his team close to the West Bloomfield Lakers, down just 10 at the break. Oxford 7, West Bloomfield 17 in the third to last game of the regular season for both of these squads. West Bloomfield next week will come home for their final regular season game of the season. We'll take on another power player, Southfield a and coming to town next week to go up against the L boys on their home field. And this will be a big game for both of these teams with playoff implications galore. As both of these teams are having winning seasons so far in 2023, have a ton of talent, all eyes are on them all season long, and they're gonna match up next week in what could potentially be a big game for playoff implications. West Bloomfield coming into tonight, four and two overall, and Southfield a and going up against Rochester High School tonight could potentially come into the next week's game seven and oh, with victories over Cass Tech victory over Clarkston, victory over Groves, and two shutouts in a row coming into tonight against Farmington two weeks ago on the road, and Bloomfield Hills last week in Southfield. That is a ton of playoff points. All the more reason Zach Hilbers, after a lot of mistakes last week, after some sloppy play, he took the blame himself and said, look, I didn't have my guys prepared. I didn't tailor my game plan to where my team is at. And so this week, taking a step back, he wanted to keep those assignments simple, the play calling simple, and set his team up to make plays with a team full of playmakers. That's the game plan in this week against Oxford High School. And so far, so good for the West Bloomfield Lakers. Up 17 to seven on Oxford at halftime. Plenty more to come on the Laker Halftime Show in just a few minutes. We'll take a break on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. So, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first, I just did basketball, and I got hooked. Before long, I added baseball, softball, football, and volleyball. I really enjoy giving back to the game working with kids and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted, just listen. Inside your brain is the control center for how you think, talk, learn, and remember. 10 tips to keep it healthy. Get moving, read a book, reduce stress, sleep well, Eat healthy, quit smoking, manage your blood pressure, challenge your mind, wear a helmet, stay social. Be mindful of brain health now to help prevent things like dementia later. Learn more at michigan.gov slash mybrainhealth. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chabon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. 
you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Welcome back to the Laker Halftime Show on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keefe, and we thank you for joining us tonight on a variety of different outlets. Every single week, you're home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. You can also find us on our website on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports on our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15. And thank all of you for joining us on our page tonight, as well as the Facebook page of the West Bloomfield School District. And we're also live streaming. And you can find us on demand on our YouTube page at Civic Center TV. Go ahead and subscribe while you're over there. It's free and it keeps you updated on all of our videos. Both are live streams of events like West Bloomfield Laker football, the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce Leadership Breakfast, recently, recently broadcast on our channels. So was the West Bloomfield Fire Department open house, all of which you can see on our YouTube page for free by subscribing. And if you hit the bell also, you'll get notified every single time that we go live and when we upload a video, and it's all for free community programming right here on Civic Center TV and uh, Swisha Swisha on YouTube saying good stuff from West Bloomfield with a muscle emoji, enjoying Laker football on YouTube already tonight and plenty of football left to play. 24 minutes into this contest, West Bloomfield 17 and Oxford seven. And West Bloomfield being able to make some, some decent work moving forward against this Oxford team, particularly uh, in the in the passing game, as has been evident all throughout the season for West Bloomfield, a team that passes actually on uh, on just a slight majority of their plays coming into tonight, passing on about 53% of their plays and running on about 47%. And tonight, having to mix that up a little bit more because of the inclement weather. You're seeing players walking by and the shine on those helmets isn't just because of great work by the equipment managers of this team. But because of the moisture here at Oxford High School, it has been raining all night so far since the jump of this game. As you can see the conditions even on the field, the glistening of that blue field at Oxford High School installed back in about 2011 at Wildcat Stadium and on the uniforms of these West Bloomfield Lakers as they make their way down the steps and back toward the field at Oxford High School. And but we brand our programming off of the water, our beloved lakes, not necessarily the rain, the splash live every single day of your work week, Monday through Friday, beginning at 8.30 a.m., live on Civic Center TV and on 89.3 Lakes FM, as well as on our website, on our Facebook page, and on our YouTube page. We'll talk to headliners all across our community about events, about projects in our community. We recently had a great discussion with Kegel Harbor Mayor Robert Kalman about some developments coming into the city of Kegel Harbor. The residences at Cass Lake recently approved by the Planning Commission and going to be taking over what's currently the trailer park in Kegel Harbor around the bend on Orchard Lake Road and plenty of more things coming to cities like Kegel Harbor and Sylvan Lake and West Bloomfield and Splash Live, a great place to learn more about that. Diane Chabon and I bringing the latest news and updates from across the community every single day. Your stories from your hometown, from your community media on the Splash Live exclusively on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Uh, you know, this inclement weather tonight in Oxford, we're going to expect a lot more of that all throughout the year. Uh, in the greater West Bloomfield area. So we'll have those updates for you on our channel all throughout the year as West Bloomfield warms up for a second half. It's also a cooler night tonight in Oxford as temperatures were unseasonably warm coming into this part, portion of the week, especially last week, and then took a really quick cool down over the last couple of days. And tonight in Oxford, just 54 degrees with a little bit of wind also, nine miles per hour. and Right now, 96% of the area in Oxford getting uh, precipitation in, uh, in northern Oakland County. That's already playing a big factor as we've seen West Bloomfield fumble the ball a couple of times. They mishandled a field goal uh, off the snap. The snap went high over the head 
of the holder, Nigel Dunton. And so weather already playing a factor. Could that play a factor even greater in the second half with now the field conditions even more damp going into half number two. 24 minutes of football ahead and 12 minutes soon to go on the clock as well soon to begin half number two from Oxford High School. Next week, big game as well at home. The final regular season home game for the West Bloomfield Lakers. They will take on Southfield a and the Warriors from the OAA White Division coming to town. Kickoff at 7 o'clock. Our coverage will begin about 6 o'clock with this week in Laker football, the Laker pregame show at 6.30 and arguably the biggest game in the MHSAA next week with Southfield a and This week taking on Rochester High School and potentially with a win tonight could come into that game 7-0 Lakers if they are able to continue this first, first half performance and come into next week with a victory off of tonight's ball game could come in next week 5-2 which means for both of these schools huge implications on the playoff side next week as Lakers we come in with two losses still plenty of season ahead for them and Southfield a and could potentially come in with seven wins and an outright OAA White Division Championship coming into tonight 4-0 already secured the OAA White Division with the next closest team being Birmingham Groves 3-1 overall and this Southfield a and team we're going to see next week that's that's a tough team two-point win in week one over Cast Tech three-point win over Clarkston in week two took care of business against Harper Woods and Birmingham Groves and then two consecutive shutout wins against Farmington and Bloomfield Hills in the last two weeks they've put up 86 points and expected to have similar performances going forward uh, with Rochester tonight and then Detroit Renaissance to finish off their season but that all begins after next week's game with the West Bloomfield Lakers both teams making their way back out onto the field as we get ready for half number two West Bloomfield 17 Oxford 7 from Oxford High School Tyler Keith and the whole team here at Civic Center TV broadcasting live West Bloomfield Laker football every single week take a look over at our other camera we'll take a quick cut and there he is Matt Catoni usually with me in the booth for but tonight our crew on site he is our camera operator the true every man of our broadcast team michigan man matt catoni will be back with me next week as we take on the southfield a t warriors puts up the l boys l before the second half dave scott but the boss man the general manager of our team of our team here at civic center tv on the opposite camera and running the controls over at oxford high school calvin brown our director and Daryl Sanders with us also at Master Control at Green Media Center on the campus of Chico Elementary School. This is a big broadcast with a very small crew every single week and everybody contributing to our coverage. A huge thank you to our entire crew as we begin half number two from Oxford High School, West Bloomfield 17, Oxford 7. 24 minutes of football remaining, 12 minutes on the clock as we begin quarter number three from Oxford. Jay Cady, the booming kickoff, back and over the head of both West Bloomfield returners. It'll be a touchback, and West Bloomfield will begin this first drive of the second half at their 20-yard line. Rick Nats making big moves in the first half, really nice passes down the field, and great catches with a slick football by Marquise Morris and Brandon Davis Swain setting up some big opportunities for West Bloomfield and looking for more of the same to begin half number two, a score would put West Bloomfield comfortably in the lead. We're already in the lead, 17 to seven, starting half number two in Northern Oakland County. First and 10 for the Lakers, snap to Nance in the shotgun, hands it off, rolls outside, Cameron Flowers still on his feet, but stepped out of bounds at the 25 yard line. We'll set up second down and five for West Bloomfield. Take another look at that. Cam Flowers escapes, gets a good block from Josh Tate. Broke a tackle, and as he made a shifty move near the sideline, just happened to swipe the white portion of that sideline, putting him out of bounds and setting up second down for West Bloomfield with 11.51 to go in the third quarter. Nance with just Flowers in the backfield, a couple yards to his left, takes the snap, hands it off. Pulls it himself on the option, up to the 30-yard line, pushes forward to the 35. 
And West Bloomfield will advance forward. First down, the move to chains as Nats again takes it himself. Didn't look like he was reading anybody. A designed play on that option. The quarterback taken in on kind of an option draw. Pulls it up to the 35 yard line. First down for West Bloomfield. Nats this time hands it off on the sweep to Cam Flowers. Escapes, gets back to the line of scrimmage, up to the 40, still on his feet to about the 44 yard line. That'll set up a second down and short for West Bloomfield. Cameron Flowers, showing that escape ability, pushes through a good blocking situation, gets to the sideline, and ultimately gets out of play as he's unable to escape Anderson Krupa, the sophomore, at the sideline. Nats setting up this next play, empty backfield on second down. Trips out to the left, Brandon Davis Swain and company, alongside Jaden Allos. And one single man out to the right. Nance takes a snap to his left side. Caught by Marquise Morris at the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40. Still on his feet. Pushing toward the 35. Will get down to the 36 yard line. And another first down for West Bloomfield. Puts them in the plus territory in Oxford. Great yards after the catch play for Marquise Morris. Getting shifty. Moving up the field. Pushes down to the 36 yard line into a slew of Oxford defenders. But ultimately, another first down in positive territory. First time in the second half for Rick Nats. Flowers and Tate in the backfield for the senior quarterback. On first down, takes the snap, going to pull it himself. Runs up the middle, gets an open space. 30 to the 25, on his feet, down to the 24-yard line. And another first down for West Bloomfield as Rick Nats marches up the field for 12 yards. Making an impact. Look at that. Escapes the tackle. Almost broke away on what was ultimately a tackle by Brody Moore, but surpasses the line to gain, and West Bloomfield now will have a first down at the 23-yard line of Oxford. Empty backfield, Rick Nance takes the snap, high snap, pulls it himself, shifty move up the middle, has to escape, rolls out left, gets to the 30-yard line, and advances out of bounds. So give him forward progress to the 29-yard line off of the reach and set up second down as Rick Nance gets a high five from head coach Zach Hilbers. Look at that. Following that blocker on that second opportunity and ultimately is what gets him those yards as he pushes forward following his outside blocker in Jeremiah Benson. Nance takes the snap. Outside pass is caught to Flowers, down to the 20, inside the 10, still on his feet, down to the five yard line, and another big yard after catch play for West Bloomfield, as they will push it forward. Marquise Morris, my apologies, the receiver on that play. Escaping tackles, using his speed, keeping a low center of gravity, a great technical play after the catch for Marquise Morris. First and goal for the Lakers at the Oxford five, Nance. Snap and a handoff to Tate. Back to the line of scrimmage, pushes forward and reaches to about the three yard line and gains two on first and goal. Lakers 17, Oxford seven with 10 minutes and counting to go in the third quarter. Marching up the field, this drive began off a touchback at the Lakers 20 yard line. They've moved over 70 yards deep in the Oxford territory looking to make this a 17 point game with a touchdown and a PAT. Nance will take it himself, follows Brandon Davis Swain, a flag on the field as he gets close to the end zone, they'll give him the touchdown. But how will that flag impact this play? You see it at the top of the screen if we cut away. You'll see it on this replay here. Nance got the snap. Looks like a hold as Les Blinfield will have to try again. Nance dove, got just past the end, the, goal line and into the end zone, but that will set West Bloomfield back. It is a holding call. We'll move West Bloomfield back to their 10 yard line and they'll have to redo that play. 9.20 to go in the third quarter. As Lakers make some substitutions, Khalid Muhammad will come off the field around the 20 yard line. Nance with two out to the right and one to his left. Man in motion, Nance, quarterback draw up the middle, up the gut. Gets his shoulder into it, down to the two, but Oxford forming a wall and stopping the quarterback from getting in the end zone will set up third down and goal. Wilson and Johnson brought down Again, Rick Nance getting a great block up the middle. 
just enough space for him to slide on through, but he met the senior Luke Johnson deep. The junior Luke Johnson. Now set up third down, Lakers take the ball, Nance up the gut again and gets in the end zone. Touchdown WB. As Rick Nance again does a little dance in the end zone and the team participating as the quarterback. Three rushing touchdowns all last season and got two on the night tonight. Pushes forward, reaches forward and gets the touchdown. Escaping a bunch of tacklers from Oxford. So now West Bloomfield 23 and Oxford 7. The PAT from Justin Ward, one for one on P two for two on PATs tonight. Looking to make it three for three. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it splits the uprights. West Bloomfield 24, Oxford 7. And now West Bloomfield back in a commanding lead, up two scores and more on the Oxford Wildcats. And taking off three and a half minutes to start the first, the second half in Oxford. Next week, West Bloomfield goes home for their third and final home matchup of the season. And they're going to take on one of the MHSAA's Division I juggernauts, the Southfield A&T Warriors coming to town. Kickoff at 7 o'clock. Southfield coming into this game this week against Rochester on the road 6-0. and Have scored 86 consecutive points over the last two games without an answer from Bloomfield Hills or Farmington. Can Rochester even get on the board? And bigger question, can West Bloomfield get on the board more times than Southfield next week and pick up a whole lot of playoff points in the penultimate game of the season? 7 o'clock kickoff, 6 o'clock coverage begins with this week in Laker football exclusively on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Off the Nance rushing touchdown. And the PAT from Justin Moore, the Lakers are up 24 to seven with 8.29 to go in the, in the third quarter. Ward will kick this ball off just past the middle hash on the 40 yard line, the squib bounces to about the 25, it's muffed and Oxford's gonna have to dive on top of that ball. A little bit of trickery from the special teams now. They've been content to kick the ball off to Oxford all game long, but now, with the wet conditions on the field, with a wet football, make them chase the ball a little bit. Make them scoop that up. Wet conditions. Gloves are going to help a little bit, but those are also wet. Damp football, damp field. Could be a tough situation. Oxford ultimately escapes unscathed on the kickoff. And they'll start this drive from their 25-yard line. Hendricks hands it off. Back to the line of scrimmage. Then Moore gets about five yards on first down. Luke Johnson takes it to the 35 yard line, to the 30 yard line, and that's where Oxford will have a second down and five. Looking to answer back. This game's not out of reach for Oxford. Plenty of football left, down 24 to seven. On second and five. Hendricks under center. One man in the backfield for Oxford. Hendricks, snap. Play action, rolls out to the right, looking for a throw, and it is pulled in. Caught at the 40-yard line, the first down and more for the junior Eli Carpenter. A couple of baseball players for Oxford, a pitcher and a shortstop connecting the pitcher, being the wide receiver, and the shortstop being the quarterback. Jack Hendricks to Eli Carpenter for the first down and puts Oxford that much closer to Laker territory. It'll be a first down at the 40-yard line on the right hash for the Wildcats. Impressive offensive performance against a really tough defense so far tonight. Hendricks under center on first down at the Laker 40. Hendricks will hand the ball off. Shifty move, getting hit, getting tackled, and ultimately gonna lose about three yards, even with a little bit of forward progress. Met back about the 36 yard line, maybe the 37. Oxford will lose yards. And the damage will be just three yards, second down and 13 off of the first down run for Oxford. West Bloomfield up 24 to seven with seven minutes and counting left to play in the third quarter. Oxford coming into this game, two and four overall. One and three in the OAA red, West Bloomfield four and two with two of their losses both in the OAA red play. On second down, handoff to Luke Johnson. We'll get back up to about the 40-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. 
That'll set up a third down and 10 for Oxford. Slick conditions and the wind playing a factor too. It's getting rainier in Oxford. That water, that moisture is collecting on the field. That makes the running game that much more important for both of these teams. That makes it that much tougher for Oxford. They've been able to make some progress, particularly in the air tonight against West Bloomfield, but now they gotta move that ball forward against a really tough front seven for WB. Third down and 10 for Oxford. Hendricks under center, one man in the backfield, twins out to the right. The snap getting chased. Hendricks escapes Brendan Davis Swain, still on the move. Out to his 35, throws it down the field. That's ultimately gonna go nowhere. He had to escape the rushing defensive edge, threw that ball away and it'll set up a fourth down and 10 for Oxford. Look at that rain. It's really picking up. The wind is picking up too. You can hear it off of our crowd mic outside at Oxford High School on this rainy October evening. Now this is what high school football looks like. It's been sunny, it's been warm. It's been more like summer all season long. Now we can welcome back high school football in Michigan. Fourth down for Oxford. They're gonna ultimately punt this ball off way down the field, bouncing. A friendly bounce inside the Laker 10, down to the five, still going, and a great punt for Drew Cady. Puts it deep in Laker territory. They're gonna take over but they're gonna have some really, really bad field position on the slick field. That ball gonna get marked at the two yard line where West Bloomfield will begin with a little bit over five minutes to play in this ball game. Plenty of great Laker football content on our website on civiccentertv.com. Our Laker sports page is where you can see every West Bloomfield Lakers football game all season long, including next week's matchup against the Southfield A&T Warriors. Coming to town, the final home game of the season for West Bloomfield at Lakers Stadium at the Swamp, a seven o'clock kickoff. Our coverage will begin at six o'clock. And civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports, also your place for this week in Laker football. Our weekly look after every single game at Laker football with Head coach Zach Hilbers, some players, some coaches, and more on Civic Center TV. First down for the L boys. Oxford jumps, and that's going to give the Lakers a little bit extra space, something they desperately needed with that football lined up at the two yard line. The penalty will move the Lakers forward a little bit closer to the 10 yard line, half the distance. There and a, and a little bit more on a five yard penalty. Puts the Lakers at the seven yard line. Nance, bunch formation in the shotgun. Snap and a handoff. Rolling outside, Brandon Davis Swain to the 15 to the 20. He's on his feet. Open field to the 40. Open season for the big fella. And he gets into positive territory. Down at the 47 and Brandon Davis Swain takes it for a dash in the positive territory. Look at this, the big fella. The tight end, the blue chip Colorado commit. Hey, Coach Prime, gonna have to put this guy on offense too next season in Boulder. First down for West Bloomfield at the 48 yard line of Oxford. And again in positive territory. This rain picking up, the wind picking up at Oxford High School. So we're a little over halfway through the third quarter. Lakers 24, Oxford 7 with five minutes and counting to go in the third quarter. Nats in the shotgun, Morris in motion, gets the snap and the handoff to the 50, to the 45. Morris down to the 40 yard line, advancing, still on his feet to the 30. Still on his feet, still on his feet, still going, and he'll take it to the house. Touchdown, WB. Marquise Morris advances forward, keeps pushing, keeps going, foot on the gas, and now the Lakers have their own blowout lead on the road in Oxford. Look at this, escaping tackler after tackler. Oxford trying to dive after the wide receiver on the rushing play and just sliding across the field instead. A touchdown for West Bloomfield with 4.45 to go in the third, puts them up 30 to seven.
Ward, the PAT, snap, hold, kick, and it is good. West Bloomfield 31, Oxford 7. With 4.45 to go in the third quarter. That's what's making news tonight on Friday night. We'll have more on the West Bloomfield Lakers game versus Oxford tonight. Plus, the latest news and information from all across the greater West Bloomfield community Monday on a new week of the Splash Live. Monday through Friday, beginning at 8.30 a.m. with other showings all throughout the day on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Diane Shabon in our studio at Green Media Center and me from home as we bring you the latest news and stories from all across the four communities and around Oakland County. We'll talk to newsmakers about interesting projects. Talked earlier this week to the United Way about them partnering with the Michigan Science Center on some STEM education for schools all across our local, our local community. And plenty more news and updates, including why you should shake your mailbox as we get closer to the winter, encouraged by the Road Commission for Oakland County. That's on the splash. On demand right now, civiccentertv.com. Off the touchdown, the PAT, 31 to seven for the Lakers. They'll kick it off. Talks for another squib kick. Mishandled, but ultimately pulled in at the 20. Still on his feet and up to about the 25 yard line. A pretty good return given the circumstances at Oxford High School and the Wildcats will start off on their 25 yard line. Hey, anytime you're starting off beyond the 20, which is the touchback location in high school football in Michigan, you're doing something right in the special teams front and Oxford looking to get back on the scoreboard. Down 31 to seven with 441 to go in the third. First down rushing play for Oxford. We'll get up to the 30-yard line almost. About four, maybe five yards gained on first down. Luke Johnson, the ball carrier again, the junior. He's going to be a dangerous player in the senior season. Not only is he great on the field. Luke Johnson, an excellent student also. 3.7 GPA for Oxford High School. We'll take a break, some technical difficulties, and be back soon, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Storm water travels through a vast system of pipes and pumps to move water away from our homes to a water treatment plant and back into the Great Lakes. Our system is not designed to handle rainfall from extreme storms that can lead to freeway flooding and basement backups. Help protect your property and your community by making sure storm drains are clean and avoid using your washing machine so as not to overload the system during a storm. Keep our system fresh and flowing. It's all one water. Welcome back to West Bloomfield Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Our apologies for those technical difficulties. As Oxford marching forward on that second down play to set up a first down, knocking on the door of West Bloomfield territory at Oxford's 41 yard line. Hendricks takes the snap, play action, getting chased, rolls out to his left, pass to the sideline is over the head of his intended receiver and incomplete will set up a second down. These slick conditions, look at this. You can see the puddles collecting extra rain. It is falling hard. The wind is even blowing it into our cameras. Those lens flares, not for ambiance. It's because of Mother Nature, the third member of our crew on site tonight at Oxford High School and a thorn in the side of this Oxford offense that otherwise had been playing great football and continues to tonight against this very stout West Bloomfield defensive front. Second and 10 for Jack Hendricks and company. Takes the snap and hands it off. Up the gut to the 45 yard line. Down to about the 48 yard line for Luke Johnson. And they'll move the chains forward. They will give him forward progress just past the line to gain. And the first down for Oxford. West Bloomfield 31, Oxford 7, 250 
and counting to go in the first in the third quarter on this blue field in northern Oakland County both of these teams looking to pick up some playoff points and bounce back from a couple of rough weeks Oxford winning last week West Bloomfield losing first down rush for uh, Oxford advances in the Laker territory down to the 45 yard line and again it's Luke Johnson carrying the football for Oxford and look West Bloomfield's been able to take care of business for the most part against Luke Johnson tonight but when he makes big plays he's making a big input an impact this is a guy that averages over six yards a carry and he's done that against Lake Goring he's done that against Clarkston he's done that against Rochester Adams and he's doing that again tonight against West Bloomfield a sign of what's to come at Oxford High School Zach Line and company got one of the best running backs in the OAA Red going forward. Second down and short. Hendricks takes the snap, hands it off to Johnson. Left side, gets past the line to gain and down to about the 34, 36 yard line. Will set up a first down for Oxford as time is ticking in the third quarter. That's what Oxford's game plan was tonight. Sustained drives, using the run to set up the pass. Unfortunately, Mother Nature had a different game plan, and Oxford gonna have to make this progress on the ground, especially now in these wet conditions. First down and 10 for Oxford at the 37-yard line of West Bloomfield. Hendricks under center, two men in the backfield in an eye formation. Takes the snap, hands it off, up the gut. Oxford advances forward, pushing forward, still on his feet, down to the 20, on his feet, past the 10-yard line. What a rush for Oxford. Luke Johnson again just does not quit. The wrestler, the track star, the football star puts Oxford into West Bloomfield territory. Timeout on the field. We'll take a break. Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on civiccentertv.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at civiccentertv.com and click schedule at the top of the screen. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking. Now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Many people are feeling overwhelmed and struggling with mental wellness these days. So be kind to your mind. Give yourself permission to breathe. Share your feelings. You are not alone. Have hope. Talk to a Stay Well counselor for free confidential help 24-7 through the COVID-19 hotline. Pure is what you make of it. It's how the hustle of the cities can change the course of history. It's the beauty of the things we create on a canvas, on a plate, or stretched high above the sidewalk. It's a patch of green or a stretch of blue right in the heart of downtown. It's the buzz of it all, or if you prefer, it's tuning it all out. Clear your schedule and pursue your peer in Pure Michigan. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Civic Center TV's live coverage of OAA football, West Bloomfield Lakers, and the Oxford Wildcats. Here's what's going on, folks. Due to inclement weather, we are putting our equipment on site at risk. The conditions are worsening quickly at Oxford High School, and unfortunately, that will spell the end 
of our broadcast tonight of West Bloomfield versus Oxford. Currently 31 to 13 late in the third quarter and they ended the third quarter, so going into the fourth. Good resources to go to Twitter.com and follow Eric Pierce, the real EPAP. Uh, for updates all throughout the rest of this game. For our entire team at Civic Center TV, we thank you for joining us. We apologize for ending our broadcast abruptly and early, and we'll see you next week at home against Southfield A&T. This has been Lincoln Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM.